The power of analytics now extends into every corner of a business. For product profitability, analytics is used to maintain healthy margins. Over in marketing, there's a great deal of analytics to determine customer behavior and preferences. How do we encourage them to buy? And what features will convince them to buy? For producers and sellers of physical products, we have the field of inventory and supply chain analytics. The more items you carry, the more complex inventory management becomes. One of the biggest challenges as we progress into all of these analytical areas is the ability to instill a data-driven culture. With it being such a difficult endeavor, why would we wish to do this? An MIT professor reported that companies that embrace a data-driven decision-making culture have output and productivity that is 5 to 6% higher than those that don't. And an analyst at Forrester was quoted as saying, for the typical Fortune 1000 company, just a 10% increase in data accessibility will result in more than $65 million of additional net income. We start to see that being a data-driven company can yield both financial and productivity benefits. However, 72% of respondents to a survey by New Vantage stated that their companies had not yet forged a data-driven culture. So if you've been trying to establish a data-driven culture and haven't quite gotten there yet, rest assured you are not alone. Building a data-driven culture takes time, and I can say that it's a journey of several years to educate and change the mindset of many business professionals. We need four things to become a data-driven culture. First, a data-driven culture needs data. Makes sense. Next, we need the tools by which we can analyze our data. Third, we need the skill sets to be able to use the tools to analyze our data. And finally, we need a mindset shift to get people thinking about and using data for practical decision making. Which of these do you think is the hardest to achieve? Let's talk about data. We need the right data, and by that I mean we need the data which will allow us to answer the business questions we have in mind. We need a data quality level appropriate for the analysis we wish to run. If we only need a directional idea of some aspect of an analysis, then we can accept a lower level of data quality. If we need precision in our analysis, then we need a high level of data accuracy and data cleanliness. We need what data people call a single source of truth. In cases where the same type of information exists in more than one system, we need to agree with our fellow analysts in other functional areas which system should be used. It is not unusual for these systems to be accurate, but slightly out of sync with each other depending on when one system replicates data into another. All in all, this section of establishing a data-driven culture is reasonably easy. Now there are a few additional considerations on the data section of this discussion. With data access comes great responsibility. There needs to be specific guidelines and policies regarding data governance and data privacy. Who can access the data? Who can extract data from the system? How will data be shared while still preventing sensitive information from reaching people it shouldn't? For data protection and privacy, there are existing regulations and there are new regulations being formed. These regulations aim to balance protecting data privacy while also providing transparency to customers and employees as to what you plan to do with their data. In the EU, we have the GDPR. This provides employees the right to be removed from an HR system once they leave the company. It also gives you the right to be deleted from an email list. If you have ever unsubscribed from an email list, that is not the same as being deleted. The state of California put similar rights in place in 2020. I think we can expect to see that expand into other states as well. As of October 2021, Canada is drafting its own regulations, which will also be very similar to the GDPR, in that you will have the right to be removed from your employer's HR system if you request it. 
and even if you don't request it, your employee record will likely be scheduled for removal in about seven years. Next, we need tools. And we need those tools to be appropriate for the type of analyses we wish to conduct. And, for practical reasons, we need those tools to be available within our budget constraints. As an example of choosing an appropriate tool, if I'm going to run an analysis once and it's statistical in nature, I may choose to use SPSS, Minitab, or Excel. If it's an analysis that I know I'll have to run repeatedly, I may choose to code an R script to make conducting the analysis much faster in the future. Of course, you do have to invest the time up front to code that script. When we speak of budget constraints, you may have noticed that software tools have moved away from letting you buy the software once and toward charging you an annual fee to use it. For example, you may have purchased Minitab in the past and have been using the same version ever since. You'll find that this and other statistical tools now charge an annual fee. You are essentially renting the software instead of buying the software. This trend has increased the popularity of tools like R and RStudio because they are free. In fact, I've seen entire analytics teams in global companies use nothing but R for exactly this budget reason. Once we have data and the appropriate tools to conduct an analysis, we need people with the skill sets to know how to analyze data and how to interpret the analysis within context. By context, I mean that if you conduct an analysis for a specific business area, then you need a certain amount of knowledge about the business area to be able to understand what your analysis is trying to tell you. Often, analysts do not have this knowledge, especially when they're new to the company, so teaming up with people in that business area to interpret the analysis together is highly recommended. An additional skill set needed here to help encourage a data-driven culture is the ability to explain an analysis in multiple languages. Here, I'm not talking about English or French or German or any other language. I'm saying that you need to know how to speak to highly numerical people like ops and finance, but still be able to explain your analysis in non-technical words for functions like HR who are not used to mathematical conversations. You'll need one more skill in this section, and that's the ability to plan for efficiencies. As your company begins to embrace data, as an analyst, the number of requests you receive for data and analysis will ramp up very quickly. If you don't plan for efficiencies such as creating automation scripts or building self-service tools, you will quickly become overwhelmed. Plan for efficiencies today to free up resources for tomorrow. Finally, we have the most difficult quadrant, and that's changing the mindset of people in your company. This quadrant will take the longest, and it will take several years, but it is possible. If you read articles online about creating a data-driven culture, you'll see that it always says to start with executive support. That will certainly speed the journey, but in reality, most people will not have that support. You can still succeed from the bottom up, like I did. To succeed, you need to realize that people can't envision what data can do for them if they've never seen an example of it. You need to take people on an educational journey, even if that's a few people at a time. Once people see examples of analyses you've conducted that generated value, which means revenue generation, cost savings, or increased productivity, then they have new ideas of what can be done to help them in their own business areas. It takes patience and the willingness to teach the basics like data literacy. What is a trend? How are conclusions from a chart distorted by poorly designed graphs? What is the margin of error? What does it mean on a survey or poll result? These are fundamental skills that need to be taught to all business professionals. To start spreading a data-driven culture within your company, you need an intentional plan. Perhaps you form a community of analysts throughout your company. Maybe schedule 30-minute lunch and learns to share successful analyses you've conducted and the value it provided to your company. 
Building a data-driven culture takes time, but it can be done. To help you on your journey, I'll share links to several resources in the notes. If you're looking for courses or downloadable templates related to metrics and analytics, you can check out my academy. If you'd like to ask a question or seek advice, you can join my private community, which is hosted in the same location as the academy. And of course, there's a variety of educational videos on this YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to press like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive a message when new videos are released. You can also explore the other videos in this series or visit our website for more information on how to use data analysis to improve your business.